morning dear friends and welcome to this holy mass of the 23rd week in ordinary time this mass will be offered for you for your families especially for those families that are broken fractured or thrown in some way that the moment may be the glue that holds families together and keeps family thriving pray for those who are sick Pray for those who are struggling as we celebrate Labor Day weekend today. Pray for those who are without employment, for those who are in fear of losing employment, that God may provide for everyone. Pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries and other special events today. Pray and ask that God may bless them, that God may grant them many more years to celebrate. I invite you to bring your intentions and let us pray together. Our opening hymn will be City of God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep. A new day is dawning for all those who of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Good morning dear friends and sorry you had to wait for two more hours before this Mass. Normally we'll start our Masses at 9 o'clock Eastern. Um, the reason was that we were, I was unable to broadcast Mass that we celebrate, celebrated at the chapel together with with um, other parishioners. So hopefully from next week, we will begin to broadcast from our church where we will share God's love with you all. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrary, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. We came to call sinners to repentance. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you are the Holy One. You are the Lord. You are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption. Look graciously upon your beloved sons, your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord. You son of man, have appointed watchman for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for, for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die. 
and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way. The wicked shall die of his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if I warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn away, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If today you listen to his voice, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyful to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing songs to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, when your fathers tempted me, when they tried me, though they saw my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandments there are, are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is a fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit, reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have one over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth and ask anything of which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I hope that you are doing better today, especially on this um, Labor Day weekend, where we have one extra day for some or two for others. We pray that you may find opportunity and find time to do exactly what the Lord is suggesting in the gospel me. Now today I want us to talk about relationships and talk about healing our relationships or reconciling the differences or the tensions and healing the fractures in those relationships. 
Now, this is a very uh, established fact. It's a well established fact scientifically and even scripturally that we were created by the Almighty God to be in relationships. We cannot but be in relationships. That's why when God created Adam, the one thing he said was, it was not good for man to be alone. That means man had to be in relationship. So as human beings, it is part of our constitution to be in relationship with the other. The other could be your wife, could be your husband, could be your sister, your brother, it could be your mother, could be your, your dad, it could be your, your, your neighbor, your colleague, your friends. It could be people that you come together for a common cause. It could be members of the church or any other organization. But no one can grow fully, comfortably, and grow perfectly, and grow and be successful in life without other people. It's impossible. You grow up needing a nurse. You grow up needing a teacher. You grow up needing a neighbor. You grow up needing people in the course of your life who are going to provide services to you. So we are constantly in relationship. Now, not every relationship is as valuable to us. There are some relationships that are more valuable, more central, more important to how we see ourselves, how we grow, how we develop, and who we become. Those are relationships that are very central to our emotional health, to our physical health, to our mental health, and even to our spiritual health. When those relationships are going well, it shows in our lives. We are happy, we are content, we are satisfied, we are booming, we are blooming. Look, we are thriving, everything works well. You are doing well in your office, you are doing well in your career, you are doing well in school. When those relationships are okay and are doing well. When they are not, it also shows. We begin to drink, we begin to indulge, we begin to live dangerously, we no longer take care of ourselves, we are depressed, we can't sleep. So, so you realize that that's what happens when a relationship is fractured or wounded or injured. It affects the person. It affects you physically because there's enough studies out there that confirm the fact that most of the diseases that people suffer, whether they are cancers or tumors or even depressions, are related. There's a correlation between the nature of the relationships that you care about and your health. So when the Lord says for us to fix those relationships that we care about, He wants us to be happy, He wants us to be content, He wants us to thrive, He wants us to live well. It is for our health, our mental health, our spiritual health, our physical health. There are studies that have confirmed that our relationships, healthy and strong and vibrant and resilient relationships are protective factors for a lot of things, uncountable things. And I think it's no wonder when you read the gospel today, this gospel is from Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 to 20. But earlier on, Jesus had also made reference to something like this. If you read Matthew's gospel chapter 5, you read verse 26 to verse 27, the Lord said, if you have something to offer to God, that means if you have anything, a gift, a prayer, a petition, thanksgiving, whatever it is that you have to offer to God, and then you realize you have something against your brother or your sister, he said, set the gifts aside. Go back first and make peace. Make peace with your brother or with your sister or with your friend or with your neighbor. Come back and offer that gift. Now, what that means to me is that when we have fractured relationships with people that we care about, with people in our lives, we are not in the best place to offer God thanks. We are not in the best place to offer God prayers. We are not in the best place to offer God gifts. We may not be in the best place for our prayers to ascend like incense to the Almighty God. So we must first of all repair those relationships that God cares about because He cares about those relationships that you and I also care about. So I don't know where you are right now with people that are in your life. But maybe 
There's a situation shape that is fractured right now, or that is broken right now, or that is injured right now, and that matters to you, and troubles you, and worries you, and keeps you unhappy or uncomfortable each time you think about it. And the closer the relationships are to you, the more they affect you, good or bad, positively or negatively. So especially for spouses, for parents and children, for siblings, those relationships when they are fractured or for people that you work with and you have to work with, you can't choose. You need to repair the damage. Now there's something that is happening here in this text. The Lord seems to place the burden of reconciliation not on the offender, but on the offended. And I think, as I'm thinking about this as a human being, not as a pastor, or as a, I'm thinking about this is unfair, God. How would you put the burden of reconciling or forgiving on the offended party? Someone has just offended me or hurt me or upset me or done something that hurt me. You're asking me to be the one to go to them? Now, it should have been the other way around. The world's way is that if you offend me, you come to me. If I offend you, I come to you. But the Lord is changing the standards here. He says, the offended party should be the one. He says, if your brother sins against you, that means not just if your brother sins, but if your brother or your sister or someone does something that offends you, that affects you, that makes you angry, upset, or miserable, the Lord says, you go to him, or you go to her. And I must tell you, as a person, I struggle with this one. I do struggle. Because I don't like people taking advantage of me. I don't like it. Humanly speaking, I don't. Now, I can be, I'm very forgiving. That means if you ask me, to forgive you, I will forgive you. Unfortunately, what the Lord is asking here is not forgiveness. Forgiveness for me is easy because I do it for myself, not just for you. I do it for me. I do it to take care of my mental health, my emotional health, and my spiritual health. But what the Lord is asking here is reconciliation, which is at another level altogether. And this one requires a lot of grace, a lot of humility, a lot of strength, a lot of character to do this. And I must tell you, I am not there yet, I struggle too, in case you're struggling. I do too. So the, because for forgiveness, I, I could forgive you without you asking for it. But I could never reconcile with you without you being ready for reconciliation. And the Lord is saying, we should do that no matter what. So, so the, what, what I thought about is first, the only way to begin reconciliation first is to begin to, be, to pray. For the one who has offended you. And that's also his heart. We can complain about those who have offended us or hurt us. We can call them names. We can gossip about them. We can say ugly things about them. But it's very hard to honestly pray for the one who has offended or hurt you. But that's what the Lord asks us. In another text it says, pray for those who persecute you. And I think that's what our persecutors need. Prayer. Because there are miserable people only miserable people, only unhappy people, only insecure people go about and hurt others and say things that harm others. So when the Lord says for us to pray for our persecutors, I think that's exactly what he meant. So begin today to pray for someone, whether that person is your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your brother, your, whatever it is, as long as you care about that relationship, begin to pray for them. Maybe right now you're nervous about the Christmas. And how you guys are going to gather in a family when your sisters, your sister-in-laws don't talk to you. Or don't even think of you as anything. Begin to pray for them. But when you pray for them and you have the opportunity, go talk it out with them. The Lord says, go talk it out with them. You too. Now that's not what we do very often. When people offend us, they are the last people we talk about. We say, we say everything to everyone else first. How this person offended me, how they, what they said, how I felt about, and we never really say it to them. And so when we don't do that, we don't fix it. And if we have gone and broadcasted everything to everyone, we make it more difficult for reconciliation with the offender. We make it more difficult. Because for instance, if I offended you, and I was the last to hear about what happened, 
and you told everyone else, you already made it more difficult for me to find goodwill with you. So that's why the Lord said, go first and talk to the person, person to person. Let them know what they did. Let them know how much you care about the relationship. Let them know why you are bringing up this thing. It's because you care about this relationship and you want things to be different. You don't want to come back to this place with them again. You have to let them know how what they did affected you. Don't make it about them. This is not a court case. This is a reconciliation motion. So it's me telling you how your action affected me. And you listening, not making an argument or rationalizing or explaining things. Don't explain. Just listen. And when you have listened, let them know that you're sorry. I learned long ago. If someone told you they were offended, don't say, why? What right do I have to be offended? Tell them you're sorry and mean it. Tell them you're sorry and mean it. What they felt is different from what you said. What they heard may be different from what you meant. But that's how what you said or what you did was communicated to them. So what they're saying to do, based on how I understood you, based on how I heard you, what you said was offensive to me. Not to you, but to me. And so your job is to listen and apologize. So whether you are on the offender side or the offended side, we must create a space, a secure space, where we can speak heart to heart and hear each other out. Whether that's husband and wife, brother and sister, sister and brother, or spouse, whatever that relationship is, people should be willing to listen to each other and talk to each other. We hear from the second reading, uh, from the, the, the Hallelujah verse, that God was all the while reconciling the world in himself and has entrusted to us, you and I, the message of reconciliation. That means he has passed on the baton to us to continue the work of reconciliation. So I hope, dear friends, that as we listen to this invitation or to this recommendation from the Almighty God, to go reconcile, that we take it seriously. Because the, the, the Alleluia verse says, sorry, the responsible verse, if today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. And today's God's voice is saying that we go and amend our relationships. Think about the billions and billions of dollars we spend every day and every, sorry, every year on medication just for people to sleep and take care of things that could be taken care of by just doing and healing and mending our relationships. Think of how many people die because they are unable to manage a failed or broken relationship. We don't have, it doesn't have to be that bad. Today God gives us an opportunity to go mend that which is broken. The sooner we do it, the better. Because scripture tells us when you read Ephesians chapter 4, you read Ephesians chapter 4, you read and that's verse 18 and verse 19. The Bible tells us, yes, you can be angry, but you must not let your anger lead you to sin. The sunset must not meet you still angry. Do not give the devil an opportunity. Another text says, do not give the devil a foothold in your life. Because the longer it stays, the longer your anger, anger itself is not a sin, it's an emotion. But the longer it stays, the devil can exploit your anger and turn it to make it more difficult for your family to function properly and function well. Take a deep breath. You have choices to make after your anger. God is saying you must make the good choices after your anger. When you are, when you are okay with the anger, when you have been able to maintain the anger, you go talk it out. You go fix it. Because your mental health, believe it or not, your mental health, your spiritual health, your physical health, and your emotional health is dependent on the health of your relationships, especially those that matter to you. May God help us, whether as families or at this point in our country where our nation is so divided and so broken, that God may help us 
to mend our racial differences, to mend our political differences, where families are broken because of politics, broken for all kinds of stupid and silly reasons. May God help us to recognize that those relationships are more important to us than any political view or any racial consideration. May God help us to heal that which is broken. Because when we don't, we lose it. So always I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you remain the delight of God Almighty. And that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. By his grace, Christ has gathered us in his name. Our prayer will be granted by our Father in heaven, for we know that Jesus is here in our midst. That the members of the universal church may walk together in unity, putting aside their differences, putting aside their bitterness, and working together to build a more resilient church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations may respect human rights and reject repression and torture and so build a society where everyone feels respected, fairly treated, and accommodated. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people whose actions separate them from the church or from each other may seek reconciliation forgive offenses, and work together to build healthier, stronger, and more thriving families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be just and loving as we live out the commandments of God in our communities, in our families, in our churches, with our neighbors, and people God is placed in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose families are breaking or broken or injured or fractured in some way, that the grace of God from this altar may reach out to you, help you heal the divisions, the tensions, help you heal the fractures, that God may take the broken pieces of your families and fix them and bring them all together again. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, for those without employment, for those in danger of losing their employment, for those who are seeking work and cannot find, that God may help, forward, may help you find a way forward and point a place where an employment, where employment can be found and touch the hearts and minds of our leaders to create opportunity for that to happen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, that they may be cleansed from their sins and be prepared for eternal unity with, our, with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, 
And blessed is the fruit of our womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Lord God, our Father, grant the prayers of your people. We join them with the intercession of Jesus in our midst, our brother, our priest, and our king, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, it become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. O God, who will give us gifts of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lead them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And it's coming in glory. We await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like a dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
him. Let us pray in the words our Lord gave us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. My dear friends, from me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray for grace of spiritual communion. Most merciful God, most of our families are not doing well at this time. Our lives are fractured. Our nation is broken. Our tensions, tensions from race, tensions from politics, tensions in a lot of other areas of God. There is fear in so many lives right now of what might happen in their families or even in their communities. We ask, O oh God, that you give us a grace from this sacrament, from national reconciliation, for family reconciliation, and for personal reconciliation with ourselves. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gift that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and schools of the devil. May God rebuke him with humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell stand on all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to thank you for your patience, and thank you for joining us at this Mass. As I said at the beginning of this Mass, um, our Sunday Masses would be at the big chapel beginning next week, so you would um, have the opportunity to celebrate with our other parishioners who attend Mass on Sunday here at Fort Drum. I pray that God may bless you, God may watch over you, God may protect you, that He may shield you and your families. And I hope that as you hear God's word, 
calling you to seek reconciliation with people you care about in your life. That the offender and the offended may open up to God's grace and so heal the tensions that exist. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of St. Michael the Archangel and our Blessed Mother, Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing the songs. Will you come and follow me if I call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I dare call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same. Will you reach the hostile state? Will your life attract to escape? Will you let me answer prayers in you and you in